Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video, I want to look at three players who are having a slow start to this baseball season and what might be in store for their baseball cards. Every single year, there are players who start hot and players that start slow. In this video, I want to look at three players who have started slow for their own respective performance and see if we look at their stats, if they might be in trouble or if it's just a fluke, they're getting unlucky versus lucky. And on top of that, we're going to look at their cards and see what we think might happen if this performance continues or if they get out of this funk. So let's just jump right into it. The very first player is Nolan Arenado. So a little bit of transparency. I have all these stats from Saturday. So I know he actually finished his game today, Sunday, and he's actually had, I think, about over four. So it's probably like 0.1 war instead of 0.2. And his numbers are probably a little bit different. And he's had a very disappointing start to his season. He's not putting up a Nolan Arenado-esque type season. We could see a few things that might be concerning. We're gonna get to those in a moment. But one thing I want to point out is he was basically slowing down prior to his best year, I'd say in 2022. In 2022, he had 7.9 war, which actually led the league, it looks like, because that's what this bold means. On top of that, he had a 153 OPS plus, which is significantly higher than any other year of his career. And we can see he hit 293, 891 OPS, 30 home runs, 100 RBI. He was very good, won the gold glove, and he helped with Paul Goldschmidt to get the Cardinals to the postseason, which is great. But now we can see the Cardinals are struggling and Nolan Arnauto is really struggling. But prior to 2022, in 2020, he had a very poor season as well, at least offensively. Defensively, this is with a shortened COVID season and a 1.5 war in only 48 games is actually really good. But that was all defense. He had arguably his best defensive season of his career in that short shortened season. And if we had this specific style of defense over the course of a full year, we might have seen a three to four war defensive season, which is crazy for a third baseman. But either way, he slowed down offensively. Then his first year with the Cardinals, he hit 255 with an 807 OPS and a 119 OPS plus. This means he was 19% better than league average, which is really good, but it's not the best. And we can see he still hit 30 home runs, 100 RBIs, but overall he was slowing down compared to where he was in like 2019 and before. But then he broke out in 2022, but now we're seeing a really slow start again. So should we be concerned? Is this a aging curve? Is it just he's injured and still playing? He doesn't want to sit out for an injury list type thing. What's going on with his numbers? One thing I want to say before we look at his baseball savant numbers and such, he's still on a Hall of Fame path. Here is his seven-year peak war. This is his seven best seasons combined, and he has 44.4 war. The average Hall of Famer has 43.1. He's averaging six war for every 162 games played. The average third base Hall of Famer averages 5.1. So he's basically still on pace to get there. All these metrics basically say he'll get there, but it's one of those things where he can really become not just a Hall of Famer, but like an inner circle Hall of Famer is one of the best third basemen ever. Is he going to be able to do that? I want to show you his baseball savant percentile rankings. We can see right here that he actually was doing a lot better last year when it came to not striking out. He wasn't swinging and missing as much. We're seeing a higher strikeout rate here. 53rd percentile might look like it's lower, but that means he's actually middle of the league. He's just about a league average on strikeouts. Last year, he was one of the best at not striking out in baseball. His whiff percentage, he hardly ever swung and missed. He's swinging and missing quite a bit more. Last Last year and this year, he's still very good defensively, which is great, which is why he still has positive value because his offense has been so bad. But we can see he's not hitting the ball hard at all. Hard hit percentage shows how hard he actually hits the ball on average, and he is well below average of the average Major League Baseball player currently. Last year, he was slightly below average as well, but this year it's even more significant. Same with his average exit velocity. He's not hitting the ball very hard, and his max exit velocity is still below average. So there's a couple of things that are concerning. We also can see he's expecting batting average based off of where he hits the ball, what the launch angle was, how hard it was, was in the 80th percentile, which is why he had a 293 batting average. And this year he is below average there as well. He's just not making the same contact as normal. We can see that with his spray chart, he had a lot of extra base hits. This year he only has seven, including today's game, which is not ideal. Interesting thing about Nolan Arenado, he really became pull happy, which is fine if that's how he wants to actually pull for power. We can see that here. He's not afraid to go the other way for singles and doubles, but not one home run in the last two years to even center field. So pretty interesting stat on Arenado. So overall, it's interesting to see to say, I don't know if he's injured because they don't really release that stuff of players still playing. I don't know if it's an aging curve type thing. I don't think it's aging curve. I think it's either just a slow start or he's dealing with a nagging injury. I would like to bank on him actually bouncing back to a season very reminiscent of 2021 or better. I would actually say maybe better. A 119 OPS plus for Nolan Arenado would not be hard to beat at all. 34 home runs and 105 RBI will probably be hard to beat with how slow he started, but I still think he'll end up with a higher batting average, higher OPS. 
OPS, higher OPS plus. And I think defensively, he might have a hard time winning because of Cabrian Hayes and how good he is defensively. But either way, Arnado, I think will be fine. And for the long run, I think his cards will be fine as well. In the short term, we have not seen his cards drop yet. So this is from Card Ladder. This is the player index, which takes all of his cards into consideration. And we can see, even though he's struggling, his cards are at an all-time high for Nolan Arenado cards. He hasn't slowed down at all. And so when is that going to happen? He can't continue to play terribly and the Cardinals can't continue to lose and still have value for Arenado. Here's an example of one of his Bowman Chrome autographs. We can see it's currently worth, the last sold price was $650. And there was like an outlier sale here of a thousand bucks or so. This was from 2021. But basically he's still trending up if we compare this to other players that might be dropping because, you know, the market's slowing down. People are concerned about inflation all that good stuff. But either way, Nolan Arnauto is still going up. He hasn't really dropped yet. The same thing can be said with his Topps Update Rookie card. This card is actually basically up since the last six months, and you would not expect that from a player who started as slow as he did. So I do think there is concern with his cards. The funny thing is, in 2020 and 2021, when he had those slow years, I was starting to get concerned about Nolan Arenado. And I thought, I'm going to sell my Nolan Arenado cards now, so that way if he has another slow year with the Cardinals next year, I can buy them back cheaper. I sold those cards, had the best year of his career. His cards went up higher than ever. And then I bought a bunch of his cards this offseason, all of which were actually really good deals. I don't feel bad about it at all. And now he's struggling. So maybe I'm just jinxing Nolan Arenado. But in reality, it's just baseball is a very hard sport and baseball is a game of six to seven months of a regular season. He had one bad month. Doesn't mean he's going to be bad for the rest of his career. Next up is Julio Rodriguez. People are panicking on Julio Rodriguez. Spoiler alert, his cards are dropping, which I'll show in a moment, but I don't think people should be panicking yet. The one thing I will say about Julio Rodriguez is his cards were extremely expensive heading into the season, irrationally so. He was basically World Series MVP baked into his pricing already with what he's accomplished. He's a great ball player, 21 years old for the Mariners. Mariners fans are very excited about having some life in their fan base for the first time in a while, which is exciting for Mariners fans. And he was fantastic last year. Top 10 MVP finish. 25 stolen bases, 28 home runs, a 144 OPS plus, and then he had positive defensive war, positive offensive war for a 6.2 war season as a 21 year old. All of that is awesome. This year, however, we're actually seeing defensively, he's doing better than last year, which is good, but offensively, he's taking a major step backwards. Julio did hit a home run today, so maybe his season is completely turning around, but either way, hitting 215 with a 674 OPS and an 88 OPS plus, meaning he's 12% below league average. So the league average offensive player so far has been better than Julio Rodriguez, which is surprising. He has not stolen many bases, actually has almost the same amount of caught stealing as stolen bases, and the power has not quite been there as to what we would expect in his sophomore season. There's a couple things I want to show, and BABIP is batting average on balls in play. This just means when he puts the ball in play, this is the average he has. The average player is around 290 to 300. He is significantly higher for his entire career outside of this year. That's basically just because he hits the ball so hard and he's so fast that when he puts balls in play, good things happen, and he's hitting maybe ground balls, line drives, and less fly balls. And so he's able to get hits and all that stuff. So that's kind of how BABIP works. That, that was a very low level explanation, but that's the thing I want to show you is his BABIP is low so far this year, which shows he might be getting unlucky, which I actually want to show you right here as well. We'll look at a percentile rankings in the previous slide in a moment, but we can see last year he had a 284 batting average, but his expected batting average was 253. It actually means he might've been a little lucky last year because this is taking into consideration where he hits the ball and how hard he hits the ball. This year, however, he actually has a high higher expected batting average, but his average is significantly lower. So he's probably just getting a little bit unlucky. The BABIP actually shows that as well. So that's why I'm not necessarily concerned about Julio. He's just not really hit his full stride yet because he's a baseball player in his second year in Major League Baseball, which is the hardest level of baseball in the world. And he's just having a bad month. I don't think that's a huge deal. He had a slow start last year. That could be due to umpires making a strike zone really tight. Could have been just because maybe he's a slow starter in the big leagues. But I would say don't panic and sell necessarily, especially if you paid a really top price for it because I think he might be able to bounce back. The important stuff like defense and speed is still there. And his offensive profile looks exactly the same. It's just he hasn't had the consistent hard hit balls, but he'll get there in my personal opinion. So let's go back to here real fast. Let's just look at his batted ball profile. The one thing that is weird, he's actually not pulling the ball very much this year. Normally he's around 41 to 45% pull rate. This year he's at 32%. So he's going to center field and opposite field more. Maybe that's where he's having the issues. The home run he hit today was a pulled ball. 
ball and he crushed it like 450 feet. So I think as he continues to pull the ball with his speed and with how hard he hits it, that's when we're going to see him perform better, especially because I can't really shift him with three players on the left side anymore. So he has a great opportunity to get more hits if he can do that. But like I showed you, here's his baseball savant percentile rankings. Pretty cool stuff. His splits don't say anything. So this right here, this is the TOPS plus 100 on both of these would mean he's the same on both. A 98 TOPS plus and a 106 means he's basically the same against righties and lefties, while a TOPS plus of 119 and 75 says he's really good at home and not really doing great on the road so far, which these numbers show, but it's nothing to be really concerned about yet because I don't think it's been a big enough sample size to worry. So don't worry about that. His cards though have dropped. This is going to be a little bit backwards, but right here is the March sales going up to April, then April up to May. This March sale was $7,200 for his blue Bowman Chrome autograph and a BGS 9.5 with a 10 autograph. And that card sold for 7,000 and then it dropped about five to 6,000. Then it dropped about 4,000 and now it's like 3,300. And it's getting to the point now where that pricing makes a little bit more sense and maybe it's a time to buy his cards. I'm not saying buy his cards. So if you believe in him, they've dropped about 50%. This particular card as an example, it's getting closer to the price of like Mookie Betts, Nolan Arenado, even Bryce Harper, right around those players. So if you think he's that type of a player, then this price might make sense for you. On top of that, his base Bowman Chromatograph is seeing some significant drops. We can see right here, it is down to about $1,000 when it was selling really consistently for around, what, 1,500 to 2,000 not long ago, and we're seeing a true drop down. And this is just a little bit of an overreaction because that's what we do at the beginning of a baseball season. Next up is Spencer Torkelson. I will not spend too much time on Spencer Torkelson because I don't really believe in him as much as some people might. I don't think he's a bad Major League Baseball player. So far, he's played like a bad Major League Baseball player, but I think he's going to have some really good years in his career just because his offensive profile from the minor leagues and from his college ranks were actually really, really good. The one thing in the minor leagues though that might be concerning is he only played like one, maybe one and a third seasons in the minor leagues right before coming to the big leagues at age 22, and he was not great last Last year and he's actually been basically worse this year when it comes to like OPS he's actually having a worse year but he can turn it around he has a ton of time to turn it around he's on the Tigers so he'll get at bats every single game and on top of that he has a decently high ceiling but he also has a really low floor so I'm not really sold on his cards so if you have Spencer Torkelson cards I'm not saying sell them panic sell them but I'm just saying I personally wouldn't be buying his cards but at the same time he could be a breakout star at age 24 and be amazing moving forward but just for me I haven't seen enough of him at the big leagues to really make me think he can get to that point. In the minors, he had a 258 batting average. So that's kind of where he is as a 250 to 270 batting average guy with power. But if the power doesn't develop the big leagues, it's going to be tough to justify the values that he's had over the last few years. So overall, those are the players I wanted to look at today. Let me in the comments below which players you are concerned about, which players you aren't concerned about, and I will see you in the next video.